regular season finale takes place this week on the PGA Tour at the Wyndham Championship. Man, it feels feels like a long time. Whether you consider that season starting, you know, in the fall or one of those people that don't accept the season starting until they're in Hawaii. Either way, it's been a long time. It's a lot of golf. Honestly, about time for them to wrap it up. They'll only be starting like the week after the FedEx Cup anyway. I'm sure it's the Fortnite. We'll be right back at it. No oh, rest yeah. for the wicked, but props are here. Oddschecker.com slash US. My guy at Tour Picks, Joe Idoni, is here. Start us off, Joe. Let's get right into it. Three props, each of us, for the Wyndham. All right. I'm going straight to the T20 market this week. JT Poston, former champion here. Um, won this event a few years ago, and the incoming form has been really solid. I feel like a lot of people are. Um, he's relatively slept on this week. I haven't heard his name too much, but number one in par four scoring, Jeff, in that 400 to 450 yard range coming into this event, which the majority of the par fours, we know there's only two par fives, the majority of the par fours fall into that category. Um, top five putter right now, top five in birdies are better gained. He's really, when I looked at long-term form on Donald Ross tracks, he ranked second. So not only is the incoming form well, he's an ex-champion coming back to this event, and he's plus 210. So you're getting more than two-to-one odds over at FanDuel on a top 20 for the postman this week. That's how I'm going to start it off. Uh, who do you got, pal? inform off his John Deere win. You ignore this one for a couple of days. Don't be shocked. You see like Poston's eight under through 11 holes and doing it again. Uh, I'm not invested in him, but it sounds smart. I'm starting off. We're going to, I got double barrel in the T20 market. Friend of yours, Adam Svensson, plus 300, top 20. Seven of the last 10, the driver has been gaining strokes for him. That'll be key to put us in a spot, but as all uh, you would know better than most, Joe, it's hard for Svensson um, to get the irons and the putting to line up in the same yeah. week. They sort of keep going oppo taco for the moment, but th the driving in the fairway, we'll get it all lined up in the same week. Svensson plus 300. I think a classic Donald Ross layout suits his game to a T. So I'm back in your boy, Svensson this week. Uh, I'll keep it in the top 20 market. And you can tell me why I'm wrong. Ty Hatton, uh, Ty Hatton plus 180 for the top 20 this week. I kind of feel like even in the outright market, Joe, his number sits as high as 40. It's a really high number on a really talented player. No disrespect to say you're. Denny McCarthy's or Siwoo Kim, like there are a lot of really good players who, who, who Terrell Hatton is getting a bigger price than, and it's reflected in the placing markets. I'm willing to take a chance on Hatton. Hard to correlate the success and the uptick at the Scottish and the Open Championship to say it's going to lead to success here. Uh, but I, I'm I'm playing the ceiling on Hatton, and don't be shocked if I add him on my outright card. I stared at it long and hard, Jeff. And um, before I sort of give a counterpoint here, look, if you're going to play Hatton, I do feel like if you're going to play Hatton within the continental U S you want to be in the Southeast on Bermuda grass. Like that's where he's had his most success. I think he made his home for a while in Orlando. I'm not sure if he's still there, but good performances at the Arnold Palmer. Obviously won that event. Good performances at the RBC Heritage, which I think is a good comp to this week's course. Won the Palmetto in South Carolina there. So um, he really makes his hay in the U.S. on these type of golf courses. But... I'm going to pick on him in a matchup a little bit. I'm going to take Adam Scott, and I'm going to kind of go two ways here on Adam Scott. I did find a number in a direct matchup with Hatton that was plus 125. So in, in matchup terms, that's a pretty substantial underdog. I like Adam Scott a lot this week coming in. I feel like on most odds boards, they are fairly even priced. If not, Adam Scott is slightly a, a bigger favorite there. So was a little surprised to see that number. Um, playing well, obviously was in this, the six man playoff here last year, top 20, top 15s in his last two majors being the U S open and the open championship, a good performance, albeit with the exception of one really bad round last week, um, at the rocket mortgage. So he's been playing more golf. I feel like he's been more consistency. 
consistent um, than Ty Hatton has been recently with the PGA Tour starts. And he lost – Adam Scott lost more strokes putting last week than he has since 2019 um, and still played okay. So – one bad putting week. I think he's getting back on a course that fits his game. I'm going to take Scott two ways. The first being in a matchup against Ty Hatton. The second being in the top Australian market where it's essentially him versus Jason Day in a head-to-head. Um, and Scott's plus 140 over at points bet to be the top Australian this week. Um, I like both of those bets. I'm going to put my bucks on Adam Scott this week. Sorry to pick on your guy, but who's your final pick there, bud? Here, here's the thing. If you've watched... Listen, a lot of the co- comments in the content I've done all year is like, Feinberg, stop talking about Scott. Uh, <laughs> he's probably the player I talk about the most and don't bet. Like, my video last week with Rick was, like, all about Scott. Um, and I like Scott. I actually think I might add Hatton and Scott at 40 to my outright card. A 40 on Fox bet using um, the grid on Adam Scott, I think, is a very fair Number you mentioned a lot. A lot of people focus on Henley blowing it here last year, which he did. But after Henley blew it, Scott missed like a four footer in the playoff where he should have gotten it off the mat. So I've talked up Scott all year. This would be the last chance I or I, one of the last chances to do it. I actually wouldn't be surprised if you look below if you're watching on the odds checker webpage uh, to see both of them at the 40s have been added to my card so I, i'm not gonna complain and you're probably right i could see hatton bottoming out but there's a ceiling of it where um you know you could bet hatton to miss the cut and bet him to win and i don't think you're crazy <laughs> in that in that respect because if he's feeling it in this field is gonna be just like those guys in the 20s the shorter 20s yep. um i don't got much to say about the last pick here people are gonna be shocked it's coming from me i respect what i've been seeing it's undeniable, and I think the layout is perfect for everything Justin Rose does well. Give me a plus one thirty on the top on the uh, on the T thirty mark, plus one fifty on the T thirty market here. Even jumping in front of that T forty market for me, guy I thought about betting outright. Didn't have the full stones to pull that one off, but uh, I think the approach play, everything sort of starting to click. This seems like a perfect place. Um, for just for Justin Rose. Yeah, would agree there totally. Um, it seems like a great track that sets up for his for his sort of strengths coming into a little bit of a form. Had a great Canadian Open there, so we've seen spurts. We know that he has plenty of incentive with the FedEx Cup up and coming to gather as many points as he can. Got be motivated off along. Stenson's win, right? Sort of to cut be. you off there. Hanson. Well. I lost too much money for Liv with the Bryson ship going wrong last week. Full yeah, disclosure, we'll have fun when it goes right. We'll knowledge when it goes wrong. <laughs> Bought into the CH3 angle like fully. You could not have Sorry. sold me on Stenson. Like, I no. wouldn't have cared what someone would have told me. You could Jeff. not have sold me on that Stop. going down. But Our I guy didn't... Dom came on my podcast last week and told me Stenson, and I literally laughed and said, are you serious? And he was right. And I never, like, it was almost disrespectful that I did that to him, and I felt bad about it after. And, of course, it hits. He got the last, he got the last um, laugh, and you could argue Stenson does, too, because, you know, we can make, you know, he. Uh, Four four million is a lot of money uh, on top of everything else to make you forget uh, all the noise. Easy. I promise you could plug your ears with that money easily. (laughs) Uh, Okay, Joe, let's get out of here. FedEx Cup playoffs will start next week. Can't wait for that. Two of the best events on the calendar, non-major probably, coming up after the Wyndham. We'll be back, hopefully, with some winners in pocket. We out.